Ever recorded a vocal track that sounded great until you cranked up the volume and heard hiss, hum, or static in the background? That's the ghost of poor signal to noise ratio haunting your mix. Let's talk about why this happens and how to fix it. Hi, I'm Todd and I hope you're having a great day. So what is signal to noise ratio? Well, this ratio that we often refer to as SNR is a measurement of how much of the audio you want to hear, like vocals and instruments, is present compared to the amount of unwanted background noise you don't want to hear. It's expressed in dB. Imagine your signal is the voice of a singer and the noise is the hum of an air conditioner. Let's say the vocal recording peaks at 80 dB and the background noise is constant around 20 dB. Your signal to noise ratio is the difference, or 60 dB. And you might say, well, that's pretty good. But the issue is your vocal is dynamic, so the loudest parts of the vocal will have 60 dB of separation, but the quietest parts may have a lot less. The higher the number, the more separation there is between the vocal and noise, and the cleaner the sound of your recording will be. The quietest parts of the vocal need to have enough separation to ensure a good recording. So why does SNR matter in recording, mixing, and mastering? In pro audio, clarity is king. A high SNR means your recordings are crisp, clean, and professional. Clean recordings equal clean mixes, right? Well, maybe. But certain mixing processes, such as compression and limiting, can actually reduce the overall dynamic range of the song, which brings noise closer to the music we want to hear. Mastering can take this a step further. Have a low SNR? That's when your mix starts to sound like it was recorded in a busy shopping mall. So when it comes to signal-to-noise ratio, keep this in mind. High SNR equals less noise, more detail. It's absolutely essential for vocals, acoustic instruments, and for quality mixing and mastering, and SNR impacts dynamic range and headroom. Next time you're recording a whispery vocal, remember, if your SNR is low, the noise floor will compete with the voice. Boosting the gain only amplifies the noise along with the performance, but with a high SNR, the noise will be far below the vocal, and you'll get pure artist performance, no distractions. So just what affects SNR? Let's start with microphones. They are not all the same. Low self noise mics are ideal for quiet sources. Quality condenser mics help capture a lot of detail without requiring excess gain, as long as the recording environment is as quiet as possible. If you're recording a louder source or your noise floor in the room is less than ideal, a dynamic microphone could be a good option that is less sensitive to its surroundings. Simple things like ensuring your microphone is oriented so its least sensitive direction is facing whatever's causing most of the noise in your space will help a lot. This microphone, for example, has a cardioid polar pattern. It's actually switchable, but if you have it on cardioid, it means it's more sensitive in the front than the back. So if you have the back to the noise source, it's going to pick that up less than the singer singing into the front. And this brings me to room acoustics. While a purpose-built isolated booth or room is ideal, Think of ways to reduce noise in whatever space you have to record in. Turn off air conditioning while you're recording, and reduce other noise-causing activities and items outside your recording space that might be seeping in. Seal leaky doors with weather stripping or sound blankets. Even temporary solutions like a towel along the bottom of a door will help. And try to minimize noise within the recording space. For example, if you need to have your computer in the same room and it has noisy fans, think about replacing them with quieter options or adjusting the fan speed if possible. Now, mic preamps are another consideration. High quality preamps produce less self noise. Now today, even entry level audio interface preamps do a pretty good job, but if you're shopping, look for low self noise and high SNR. Higher dynamic range allows you to capture signals with a far greater difference between the loudest and quietest things in the recording. And those quietest things are what you want to be the noise floor. Greater dynamic range equals more space between the performance and background noise, even for the quiet parts. Now, cables should be a consideration, and you don't have to go with the most expensive option, but they need to be balanced and shielded whenever possible, as they reduce RF and EM interference. Ensure that they're routed away from power cables that will induce noise. And so here are a few tips that will help you maximize the difference between signal and noise in your recordings and mixes to help you get studio grade sound. First, record in the quietest environment you have access to and use items you already have, such as towels and cushions to block and absorb noise. Place microphones close to sources and facing away from unwanted noise causing items. Gain staging is really important. You need to gain stage properly 
don't over amplify weak signals, I made a video about this to help you out. When purchasing, choose gear with a high SNR and dynamic range along with low noise floor specs. And remember, sometimes if you just can't get a round noise floor as a last resort, noise reduction plugins like Waves Clarity VX, Isotope RX and others can help improve noisy recordings, but don't overdo it. Even the best of these plugins can be destructive to audio. And if you'd like to learn more about how to get pro quality sound in your studio, check out one of the videos on the screen. You know I appreciate you joining me today and I'll see you next time.